Hello everyone. Now that we've uh, introduced what graphical vector addition is, the next topic we will be covering is the real world application of vector addition. This real world application of vector addition is called the displacement vector and it's going to describe a journey through space using position vectors. So we will need to introduce position vectors and understand how position vectors describe points in space. And let's keep in mind that the tools and ideas that we're learning this semester are going to help us describe the real world. And we'll see that vector addition is going to describe the real world through the displacement vector. Okay, so let's talk about what a position vector is. In order to discuss what a position vector is, I have brought up a map of the Earth here. Um, we don't often think about it, but every single map of the Earth that we use on a daily basis has an origin. So the origin, if we're talking about points, the origin for this map would be at zero latitude, zero longitude, or the origin would be somewhere right here. Now, this is important when we're talking about position vectors because position vectors are defined with respect to an origin. A position vector has its tail at the origin and has its tip at a point in space. So let's suppose that we tried to draw the position vector for Jacksonville on this map with our choice of origin. So we have our tail at zero latitude, zero longitude, and the tip of the position vector at the point in space that we describe. So our position vector is going to look something like this, and we'll label it position vector J to indicate that it is the position vector for Jacksonville. Now, you might be asking yourself, if position vectors are origin dependent, what happens if we move the origin? What happens if instead of choosing zero latitude and zero longitude, we choose a different origin? Let's say we choose the North Pole as our origin. So let's redraw our position vector. Again, our new origin, and I'm gonna draw it in blue, is gonna be up here at the North Pole. Um, and our new position vector is going to have its tail at that origin and it is, its tip is going to be at the location in space that it describes. So our new position vector is going to look something like this. And let's call this our position vector R J prime to indicate the low prime there to indicate that our, our new position vector has a different choice of origin. And we see that with a choice of origin, the position vectors are going to change dramatically. Um, position vectors are origin dependent. If you move your origin, then those position vectors are going to change as well. If you're working on a specific problem, it's important that you have the same origin choice for the position vectors in that problem. Okay. Let's use our knowledge about position vectors to describe and understand displacement vectors. So a position vector describes a point in space and has its tail at the origin. A displacement vector, which we define as this vector here, is defined as the change between the final position vector, which is this vector here, and the initial position vector, which is this vector here. Now, the Greek letter delta, which is this Greek letter here, in physics usually denotes a change in a physical parameter. So a displacement vector describes a journey, it describes a change in position vectors. The final position vector has a subscript of F here to denote that, th that it is the final position vector, and the initial position vector has a subscript of I here to denote that it is the initial position vector. Now, how do we describe the displacement vector using something that we've learned previously? We describe it using vector addition. So the displacement vector here is defined as the vector addition between the final and initial position vectors. It's a little bit more clear to see in this equation here. So the displacement vector can be defined as the final position vector 
added with opposite the initial position vector. So the displacement vector is fundamentally defined as a vector addition equation, which is something that we've already learned. So let's come up with an example. Let's do a real world example of a displacement vector. Let's suppose you're at the library and you take a journey from the third floor of the library to the first floor of the library. Now, whenever we define our final and initial position vectors for this journey, we need to choose an origin. For this particular problem, our choice of origin is going to be the front door of the library. So our initial position vector should have its tail at the origin and have its tip at the initial position. So it describes a point in space. Its tip is going to be on the third floor of the library. The final position vector, again, has its tail at the origin, but describes a different point in space. So the final position vector here is going to describe the point in space that is the first floor of the library. So how are we gonna do the displacement vector? How are we going to do this operation here? We're gonna do graphical vector addition, tip to tail vector addition, which is something that we've learned previously. Oh no. Okay, let's use the position vectors that we discussed on the previous slide to determine what our displacement vector is going to be for our journey through the library. In order to do graphical vector addition, we're going to need to rewrite this equation to be vector addition instead of vector subtraction. So we rewrite it like so, so that the uh, operation is the final position vector added with opposite the initial position vector. So opposite the initial position vector is going to point in the exact opposite direction as the initial position vector. So let's go ahead and write our first constituent in the vector addition. So this is our final position vector describing the location in space of the first floor of the library. And our constituents in vector addition are placed tip to tail. So opposite the initial position vector is going to be placed tip to tail with the final position vector. Now, whenever we do the resultant vector, whenever we do the displacement vector, this is going to be placed tail to tail with the first constituent and tip to tip with the last constituent. So our displacement vector, our resultant vector is tail to tail with the first consti constituent and tip to tip with the last constituent. And this is the displacement vector that describes our journey from the third floor of the library to the first floor of the library. And this is how the real world works. If you've ever used Google Maps before, you've used a displacement vector. Whenever you're in street view and you click the advance arrow that's on the street in front of you, that is the displacement vector. Google Maps is doing a vector addition equation in order to find your journey through space. Now, what Google Maps is actually doing is calculating your final position vector. It knows what your initial position vector is. So it knows where you are currently. And when you click the advance arrow, which is this little arrow down here, it knows what your displacement vector is, but it doesn't know what your final position vector is. It doesn't know what images to bring up for the next part of the neighborhood, for the next part of your journey. So whenever you're like playing a video game that records your position and you also move around, or whenever you're using Google Maps and you're in street view, it knows what your initial position vector is. So it knows where you currently are in space and it knows what your input is. So it knows your displacement vector. What it's calculating is your final position vector. So Google Maps does a, a slightly different version of the exact same thing. It's finding the final position vector using your input, which is the displacement vector, and information it already knows, which is your initial position vector. So we've talked about 
what a displacement vector is and how we use position vectors to define a displacement vector. Whenever we talked about position vectors, we saw that it was dependent on our choice of origin. Previously, whenever we were uh, describing Jacksonville with position vectors, whenever we changed our origin to be the North Pole instead of zero latitude and zero longitude, we saw that the position vector changed very dramatically. So you might be asking yourself at this point, okay, if a position vector changes dramatically based upon your change in choice of origin, will a displacement vector change dramatically based upon a change in your choice of origin? So, so let's retool our library example and have our origin for the position vectors not be the library front door, but instead, let's have it be the upper right corner of the library roof. So instead of choosing our origin to be the front door of the library, we choose our origin to be the upper right hand corner of the library roof. So, so our initial position vector is going to look like this. Again, we're still describing the third floor with our position vectors. So the tail of the position vector is going to be on the origin and the tip is going to be at the point in space. And our final position vector is going to be this vector here. Tail at the origin and tip at the point in space that it describes. Of course, like we've seen previously, these position vectors look very, very different because we have changed our origin. What we want to do is redo the graphical vector addition to determine if the displacement vector is going to change with a change in choice of origin. Okay, let's find the displacement vector a second time using our new position vectors. So again, in order to do tip to tail vector addition, we're going to have to rewrite the equation to look like this so that it is the vector addition of the final position vector with opposite the initial position vector. And once we rewrite the initial position vector to be opposite the initial position vector, we can do tip to tail vector addition. So let's draw our first constituent in the vector addition. This is our final position vector with its tail at the origin, with its tail at the upper right hand corner of the library's roof, and its tip at the first floor at the point in space that it, that it is going to describe. Whenever we do tip to tail vector addition, the constituents are placed tip to tail. So opposite the initial position vector is placed tip to tail with the other constituent in the vector addition. This is different from the resultant vector or the displacement vector. So our displacement vector is going to be tail to tail with the first constituent and tip to tip with the last constituent. So our displacement vector is going to look like this. Our resultant vector is our displacement vector. And let's compare the displacement vector that we just calculated with these different new position vectors to the displacement vector that we calculated in our first example. And, and this is the displacement vector that we calculated in our first example. I literally just copy pasted this from the previous section. And they look similar. In fact, they are exactly the same. Why, why is that the case? It's because displacement vectors describe a real world event. A displacement vector describes a journey through space, whereas position vectors are described with respect to something arbitrary. Whenever you choose your origin, that is an arbitrary choice. It's like if you were taking a trip from Missouri to Florida, that is a real physical journey that exists in the real world. But zero latitude, zero longitude, your choice of origin for how you're going to define your position vectors for that journey does not actually exist. Position vectors depend on your origin choice, which is arbitrary, whereas displacement vectors describe real world events. Okay, let's recap 
what we've learned today. We've learned that position vectors describe points in space. Position vector has its tail at the origin and its tip at the point in space that it describes. We've learned that position vectors are origin dependent. So an origin is something that we choose and it's an arbitrary choice. Whenever you change the origin, your position vectors are going to change a lot as a result. On the contrary, displacement vectors describe a real physical event or journey. So if displacement vector does not change with a change in your origin for position vectors. Displacement vector describes a real world event, does not depend on an arbitrary human choice. Position vectors do depend on an arbitrary human choice. So it doesn't change with changes in origin for position vector. And I, I just wanna stress that what we've been learning in the class so far, mainly vector addition, has real world applications. The displacement vector equation that we've been using is used by programmers, it's used by Google Maps. The, the operations that we are learning in this class have real world applications. And, and the Google Maps example is just one of many examples of how we use vector addition in the real world.